Hello everyone, my name's Anthony Cummins and I'm from Manchester, but at the moment I live in Wales and I just want to quickly talk about the coal and smoke ban, in, uh, sorry, the coal and wood ban in the UK. Now all my videos are made uh, to support my books, I'm an author, so if you're interested in keeping up with Japanese history, it's uh, Old Japan and it's Secrets from the Shores of the Samurai by Anthony Cummins. This helps me support my lifestyle, but let's talk about the wood and coal in the UK. So basically I'm from the city, city life. I moved out here uh, about five years ago and I, of course, use wood um, for my fire. Now, I live in Powys, so it's basically McCuntley and this is my fire going. And we have zero gas in the village, like none. There is not a gas line, there's not anything. You've got electricity or wood or coal, that's all you've got. You can put in an oil burner, but... That, there was no way I could put an oil burner in. So I live, this cottage is from the 1800s uh, somewhat. And just let me take you in the other room. And everything is based on fire. So there is, I don't use electric heaters. That would cost a fortune. I did it once, didn't do that again. It was way too expensive to heat this cottage. So my only option of anything is fire that's it and i purposely moved here for that reason i love open cottage as you can see i have the swords above i've got my um tinder uh there my kindling and tinder so kindling goes in there or oh, sorry guys down below there tinder up there um then this stack of wood here is actually my emergency stack of wood once i got the flu and uh, I just couldn't go outside to chop wood or get my wood. So I have two emergency stacks. Together, they will last about three weeks to get you through a really bad flu, sort of cold, if you like. So what I do is between December and probably February, I bring coal in. I have a coal bunker outside because it's so cold in this house. that There's just no way. If I was old... I would literally die. So it's that cold. Of course, I'm young. I just put a jumper on. I've got a cold at the minute, but that's nothing to do with this. I've generally caught the flu off someone. But what I want to show you is this. So can you see all the hooks up there and all the hooks above my fireplace are where I dry my clothes. I've been swimming this morning. So that's my swimming towel and my swimming trunks are there. Now, so where do I get my wood from? So basically... I will go around the local area and pick up dead wood, chopped wood. Um, if anything's been chopped down, you just go and get it straight away. The thing in this area is somebody will be on wood within minutes. People say, oh, Anthony, you're in the middle of nowhere. You should get lots of wood. No, you can't. You, it's a race to get the wood. So very rare do I buy in... Um, wood from anyone else but i do collect wood and then i have a shed outside now storm dennis has just hit and tore my shed and my fences down so i'm not going to show you that but what i do is uh let me show you outside so what i do is i collect the wood from the local area i then chop it there I split it on my, sorry guys, I split it on there. I then of course get rid of all the sap and I make massive stacks, sorry I'll take it back inside. I make massive stacks of wood, uh, Norwegian style. And then what I do is I let the rain take the sap out. So what you do is you get the wood to get as wet as you can get it in rain and sleet. And this pulls all the sap out of it. And then when the spring comes, by the way, you need to cut any tree down or try and get trees that have cut down before spring because the sap has not risen in them. So once they're cut down in the winter, you go and get them from whatever, if they've fallen down or whatever. And then you chop them up and then you split them and you expose them to the air. Then what happens is the sap evaporates or comes out of them, is washed out of them by the rain. And then when spring comes on a really hot day, when you start to get spring into summer, you stack them inside and then you leave the doors open or vent it. And in the heat of summer, the last of it goes. And then what you do is you leave it for the next year. So it's seasoned and so it goes into the next year and it sort of hardens if you like, or it gets that, you know, it's gone through a few seasons. And then you can bring it inside, which is what I do there. So that's my stack of wood there that I use. And every, that'll last me two or three days. And every two or three days, 
I'll stack the wood there. Now, if I was not allowed to do that in the UK, I would freeze. And who's going to pay for my electricity bill if they make me plug in heaters everywhere? I actually work downstairs. So I, this is, I write books on Japan. So this is uh, what I've been doing at the minute. I actually used to work upstairs, but because there's no heat in the house, it's freezing. I have to wear gloves to type. So finally, I bought a, a laptop and an iPad and I've come down here to work next to the fire because obviously I've got to work with my fingertips. So... I fully understand and I support that we have to have a cleaner world. I do get that. But there is just some times where, you know, how, what what changes would that mean for me? You know, what changes would that mean for me? So would I not be allowed to collect wood and season it? I never dry. You, uh, I never burn wet wood. You wouldn't because it makes a right mess of your chimney. So, and it makes a right stink in the house. So, of course, you've just got to plan and prep years in advance. So you've got to be about three years in advance, realistically, too. You can do it in one, but you should do it in two. So you can have wood chopped in the winter, split in the spring, dried in the summer, burnt in the winter but you really want to leave it another year to make sure it's absolutely dry and the moisture content is well low uh, as for coal i don't get smokeless because it's much more expensive um than that but i do understand people going because coal is i understand you know it lets a lot of carbon out but realistically in the winter there is no way this house would be warm just on a wood fire. You need that like glowing coal throughout the night. Otherwise, you're just freezing. Right, guys, that's just my quick video on understanding um, what this ban would mean to people like me who live in the middle of nowhere. And I have chosen this life because acting keeps me fit. Walking, getting the wood keeps me fit, keeps me outside. And in my opinion... I was being environmentally friendly because I'm using the wood from the local environment and not electricity, which comes from magical places. So I was like thinking, oh, OK, I'm going to get, you know, more environmentalist. But now I'm being told that's actually the opposite and I'm not being uh, environmentally friendly. So anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. Please do support me. If you're interested, just get Old Japan by Anthony Cummins and this will help pay for my future electricity bill in 2021 when the police knock my door down and uh, steal my fires. <laughs> it's apparently what's going to happen. I'm sure it won't. All right, guys, thank you very much.